Hi, I'm Robert Shalai, Chief of Police for Shelby Township Police Department, and welcome to Straight Talk. My guest today is none other than Deputy Chief Mark Coyle. Deputy Chief Coyle, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, sir. Uh, thank you very much, and what I'd like to talk to you today about is our, our community policing team. We launched it in 2018. Why don't you walk us through the launching of the actual team? So you and I had spoke about where we were going to go um, in setting the standard for law enforcement excellence in the county. Um, that next evolution was really reaching out and addressing our community needs. And it really started with our SROs and the conversation we had with the Utica Community Schools. Okay, and you're talking about SROs specifically, that would be the school resource officers, correct? Correct. We knew that we, uh, in conversations with the school district, that this was a must um, to provide safety in our schools, to build uh, rapport with our, our, our student body was imperative. Um, and it was our first launch of what we were going to turn into our community policing unit. Okay. All right. So our, our SROs are at Utica High and Utica Eisenhower. Uh, they've been there. I think we put them in last May, and they're doing a fantastic job for us. Um, we're getting great feedback from parents, from the administration. Um, one of our officers is a celebrity over at Utica yeah. High School. He's a social media cele celebrity. He He's got thousands and thousands of followers. And uh, do you think that see a benefit in that for our police department? Yeah, I said from the onset, you know, that, um, you know, being a former D.A.R.E. officer, spending five years in the, in the school district, it's imperative that we get out there and make connections with kids. Um, the bonus is, is that we, we have seen a diminished uh, um, deviant behavior in our schools. We just met last week with uh, the school administration who have said that this has probably been one of the most successful launches to the high school years at both Utica and Eisenhower High School, and the direct correlation is because of these SROs. Um, that's not to diminish the, um, the hard work that the school security officers had done in the past. It's just that extra layer, that community policing, that community involvement from our agency. You used a word that triggered the thought, uh, correlation. And let me tell you a correlation that I have. The two most popular police officers on the Shelby Township Police Department today, uh, Leslie Heisler and Mark Coyle, okay? <laughs> and let me tell you why. Well, when I say I've been here for four years, so I've not been here forever, um, you guys know everybody, and everybody knows you guys from the students you've touched through the years. Uh, I read the comments on Facebook when you get promoted or you do something significant, and I see what everybody's saying about you. Uh, Deputy Chief Coyle, he was my old D.A.R.E. officer. I mean, I, hundreds of people are getting on and saying this. Leslie, if Leslie had a problem at the police department, she could literally uh, have a parade down Van Dyke mm -hmm. in her support. And this is because of the impact of being able to impact at the schools with children, getting them when they're young, and, and building that relationship. Without question. I, you know, I look back at those time, that time in my life is probably some of the fondest time that I've spent in uniform because you, gr you have the ability to impact young lives uh, on a daily basis. Um, and our two SROs today, along with, um, you know, our youth detective, Mel Chesky, and um, our, our D.A.R.E. officer, Officer Leslie Heisler, um, do an amazing job. Um, they carry out this mission of providing young people the, the ability uh, to see us as role models, positive people in the community, uh, giving back, and truly, um, you know, emulating public service. I have a leadership philosophy that I carried with me uh, since probably 2004, since I first got promoted. Yeah. I find and trust uh, talented people, and I take their leash off, okay? And I've been saying this forever. Sure. Now, the key in the leadership positions that you and I are in, you can't un unleash everyone. That's the reality. If, if that mm -hmm. was the case, you and I wouldn't need to work here. If that makes any sense. Everyone could just do their own thing, whatever. We need leadership. But there are certain individuals that we unleash. One of them that we identified together is Sergeant Brandon Dowdy. We placed him in charge of our community policing team, uh, basically set our vision up. Each one of us told him what we expect out of him and everything, sure. and then told him to handle it. What, what are your thoughts on, on how he's running the team and what are some of the things they're doing over there right now? Well, when we knew that we were going to start this unit from uh, the ground floor, it was imperative that we pick the right person to run it. Um, we knew that when we started our traffic unit that we really, really needed Sergeant Tichnell to get that, to build that solid foundation. Well, Sergeant Dowdy, when he got promoted, is the same role. Um, he was going to build this thing from ground floor. He was going to set the vision and the tone that we needed to, to connect with our people. 
Uh, and then that, those people is the community. Our, our residents and our business owners of this community um, have a direct link now to our agency. They can call Sergeant Dowdy anytime for a, multi a multitude of needs. So um, he is uh, really setting the tone. He is setting the example for his staff and uh, meeting the, the current needs of our, our department's uh, involvement with the community. Now we have big plans for him specifically in 2019 and the unit community policing. Um, what are we going to be doing with him when it comes to, he's got a dual responsibility right now where he's running our traffic unit and our community policing team. What do you plan on doing with him in 2019? Well, it, we have budgeted to have a traffic sergeant come in and take uh, that responsibility away from him so that this will become his full-time job. Um, he, he is inundated with calls for service. And when I mean calls for service, that's uh, going out and doing site surveys, doing security surveys, whether it be for churches, the schools, or businesses. Um, he's also uh, inundated with requests, whether it be for um, parades or um, events that we are doing or coordinating with parks and recreation, whether it be uh, jingle bell run or fun runs. So uh, it, it is a constant um, uh, involvement with the, the community needs. I feel like we're doing a great job with our social media and then another thing we've implemented in 2018 with our community policing team was our bike patrol. What, what are your uh, feelings on that? So uh, right from the onset social media was a, a, a uh, priority of yours and it is paid dividends both personally with reaching out it is a component of our community policing unit um, it, it's daily we have contact with people and it's the 21st century policing we've solved crimes through it um, I cannot tell you um, how invaluable to our staff uh, officer Leslie Heisler is she I have friends that you and I know throughout the Southeast Michigan Chiefs uh, that say she she kills it so it's imperative. Um, she does an amazing, amazing job at, at connecting at, with that digital component. What we also realized is, is that we needed to get out there. We needed to get out of our police cars and we needed to have direct interaction with people. And we did that by implementing a bike uh, program. Um, our SROs and our bike officers are out there during the summer months uh, interacting personally with our community. So it, it, it is uh, already uh, started to uh, take off. I expect big things in the next year. I, I assume that we will use that in, in different capacities and, and, and we, will, we will find uh, new ways to implement that. Okay. Let's take a closer look at our community policing team. The community services unit is uh, it's a proactive unit. We try and uh, work with the community to develop a partnership to ultimately reduce the fear of crime and also use problem solving to prevent crime from occurring. Most law enforcement agencies function under the service response model. That's how they administrate law enforcement into the community. You call and we respond. It's usually because something's already happened. The whole idea is to get involved before things start happening. We try and uh, find different ways of communicating with all the different age groups within the community. So we're working very closely with Parks and Rec and going to these Kids Day events and having interactions with the kids and we have fun with it. We humanize our officers to show that uh, we are approachable. You can do it. There you go. Good job. It just increases our face-to-face -face interactions with the public and creating partnerships with the community so they can work with us to help reduce these crimes. I said 5,000, we'll never get to 5,000. You guys were at 20, what, 2,700 now? 2,700 after less than like 12 hours. Right, right. <laughs> I mean. One officer is in our detective bureau. She's, in, she's monitoring our social media. I'm c certain a lot of people know of her, Officer Leslie Heisler. She does a phenomenal job with our Facebook and Twitter and all that. I'm not very uh, fluent with those, that technology, but I do see that she's doing an effective job. And with that, uh, She's getting the message out of various events, various trends of the crimes that we're having, uh, like the 9 p.m. routine that she always says, just to remind people to lock your cars, lock your doors. That, that, that will remind people to reduce, to lock their stuff, and then ultimately they won't become a victim of a crime. It definitely humanizes us. And, uh, and social media in itself, I mean, we've, we've done a lot to show that we're human beings just like everyone else that's on social media. We like to have fun. Okay, Donut. The chief can't wait to meet you. You're gonna love it, Shelby Township. We we have families, we have kids, and 
we're not always just enforcing laws. Ah, I knew Officer Jake was up to something. Well, our relationship with the community started with social media. The community is actually solving a lot of our crimes for us, even when they're not the victims. Because people, I think, want to be involved. They, you know, they want to participate. They want to feel that they're helpful and they're um, contributing, if you will. And now we're, we have a conduit for which them to, for them to do it. So we have that. We have two of our school resources, school resource officers. That's Officer Nobelsdorf and Officer Lucas, and uh, they're working very closely with our high schools and. They're actively there during the school year and giving suggestions and they're mentoring the kids of, of how to be respectable kids or civilians in society. Joy got all the good looks and the brains. It's true. But That's they were true. twins, so she, luckily she got hers too. <laughs> with the nationwide issue, with the active shooter issues, I know there's a lot of parents that have their kids in school right now and uh, they're very concerned with the lack of supervision by law enforcement and the lack of being able to respond to these incidents uh, based on where we are in proximity of the schools. So having the school resource officers there will give us the opportunity to immediately address an emergency if it happens and it may very well not be just an active shooter. It can very easily just be a kid that's uh, not mentally stable or uh, a teacher that needs help with something. Um, but. At the same time, they're walking around those schools on a day-to-day -day basis, making sure that the schools are secure to the best of their ability. They're making sure that these teachers, uh, administration, and the students are abiding by the rules and doing sound, sound practices to make sure that the schools are always going to be secure to the best of their ability. Well, the staff uh, at Eisenhower has just been, like I said, I said this in an interview with the school, I mean, it's just been phenomenal to me. I feel like I, you know, actually belong there. That I'm, in a, you know, I'm one of the coworkers, if you will. Um, for the most part, you know, the kids have been great. They've been very receptive. I think they know why I'm there, um, and that's ma mainly to keep them safe. I hope that being there and meeting a lot of these kids and them getting to interact with me on a daily basis throughout the day will kind of change their perception of the law in, in a positive way, because in the past. They only got to know us if they got pulled over and getting a ticket or if we got called to their house for some sort of criminal matter, or we were there for a car accident. Or it, it's always in a negative uh, situation that you know a lot of people meet law enforcement. So this is kind of a chance for them to meet law enforcement officers in a positive way and just get to talk with us and get advice from us, learn about us. So I hope that as they grow older, they'll have a positive view of the police and they'll pass it on to their kids and they'll hopefully see a shift in some of the negative perception of us. It's extremely important. I think a lot of parents have difficulty interacting with that generation and having an officer that's approachable that's not necessarily a teacher uh, I think it will make teenagers feel a little more calm and uh, more open to talking about what issues they're facing not only at school but also at home. The response from the parents have been very good. I, Everybody's been, very, again, they, they'll come up and they'll talk to me, just, you know, thanking me for being there. They're letting us, you know, know that they're glad that we're there because I'm there full, we're there full time. You know, our, our chief does not want us to leave. I have to go to, I have to go to yeah. Tim Hortons every day. Every day. Just for a cup of joe or? Uh... So I think it's really important that we show people that, hey, this is what you see on TV, this is what you see on the news, this is what some people might be telling you or trying to make you think, but that's really not true at all. And, that we are here to help you, and that is our primary objective. If you don't follow us on social media, please do. A lot of great information on a daily basis, and most importantly, you can help us and partner with us in solving crimes. Regularly, we put up photos of uh, images of people that we're trying to identify or maybe a missing person. We need your help. Follow us on social media. All the information is on our website. Deputy Chief Coyle, uh, You've been around for a long time. You're the veteran member of our police department, huh? Just means I'm old, that's all. It's just uh, been here a long time, yeah. And you can tell years. all kinds of stories. I've heard them. Heard them. We don't want our residents to hear a lot of these funny stories you have from back in the day. But right now, uh, we're doing a lot. We're out in the community doing, providing services and doing things we've never done before. Can you give us a little uh, uh, talk about what we're doing exactly and how we're doing it? And if somebody needs to reach out to us so we can help them? Yeah, we've talked about Sergeant Dowdy and the work that his unit is doing. Um, 
it's really connecting with our, our community and ad addressing what those needs are, whether that be um, being present at a block party, uh, whether that be assisting with a trunk or treat. Um, it's really seeing us as uh, those people that are here to protect and serve. Um, so if you need that, uh, if there's something specific, Boy Scouts, Cub Scout tours, um, really the, the stuff that goes somewhat unnoticed, we want you to notice. We want you to pay attention to those things and be aware that we provide these services. Um, you said and gave the mandate to your staff when you came here, the highest quality of customer service was what we were going to do um, above and beyond uh, anything else uh, next to professionalism. So Sergeant Dowdy goes out with his, uh, his, his team and, and, and addresses those needs. Sergeant Dowdy, you could reach him on our website. Sure. You can call the police station and ask him, you know, you can come out and speak to our group or whatever, and he can talk on a multitude of mm -hmm. topics, correct? Correct. I mean, we do different things from, um, like I said, we'll, we'll talk about site surveys, whether it be at a business or a church. Um, he would coordinate with uh, Sergeant McLean any of our uh, active assailant training. So it's not just merely showing up for uh, trunk or treat, uh, planning race events, helping with uh, the 4th of July fireworks. It really is, um, if you have some um, uh, police needs that you feel need to be addressed, um, he's the conduit to our staff. He's the individual that you would reach out to. We will also do security surveys for private residences. We're trying to get our, uh, a, we get a couple more guys trained up and if somebody has a home and they're having problems or whatever or they're fearful, we can come out and do a quick assessment and give them some recommendations. So that's another service we offer. Sure. Um, as, as the word gets out and we promote this more, um, I think that you, you will see that that is the need to move him away from a dual duties and, and let him uh, primarily focus on those uh, uh, duties and requirements. I think you'll find this next segment very interesting. Let's see what Sergeant Dowdy's up to now. In the early 1900s, we had officers that were out walking the beat. They didn't have cards. It wasn't cost effective. So they were having those face-to-face -face interactions with the public and they're learning about their, their neighborhoods and what the various uh, concerns that their citizens are facing. But over time we started to really get that barrier with cars. And when you have those barriers, you're no longer having that interaction. You're, you're just getting only the reported crimes. And a lot of times people don't really report what their issues are. So when we have those face-to-face -face contacts, you ultimately will be able to make everyone happier. We're going to be a lot more successful in how we operate because we know what the actual issues are in our community. This is a big part of the community services unit is coming out and educating the public about the various trends and crimes and trying to reduce crime rates by just kind of educating you guys and looking out for uh, the, the kind of things that we take reports on. And one of the big things that focus on uh, uh, the elderly is these fraudulent calls that people have had. Has, has anyone had received these kind of phone calls that sound suspicious? I, every time I go out and talk to the public about these kind of things, everyone's raising their hand. Everyone's getting calls. I'm getting calls too. And it's, it's, it's unfortunately, it's not going to stop either. Um, so we have to be smarter moving forward to try and filter out what is legitimate and what is a fraudulent call. And we go there and we talk to them about all the various crimes that they're likely going to be victim of. So there's a lot of fraud, uh, that's a lot of fraud calls that are coming in that we're getting reported where these, these senior citizens are being, having their entire retirement being completely depleted by someone that's overseas. And just educating them reduces the chances of them becoming a victim of this. I know it's so commonplace now, and we're trying to figure out a way of how can we restructure our government system to try and impact this epidemic. And that's where this hope not handcuffs came into place. I've always found it extremely important to have the publics on your side and being able to be more involved with the community makes my job that much more challenging. But at the same time, I appreciate it that much more because it not only gives me the opportunity to do my job, but I also get to show that I'm a human being to the public. This is the kind of grill I need in my house. And people start to know that they're, we're more approachable, they're more prone to report the issues because they now start to develop that trust. And it ultimately will legitimize our department so they can see us as a, a, 
a law enforcement entity. Welcome to Shelby Forest annual picnic wow. today. There you go. Have you ever had to tackle hey. someone? Have I ever had to tackle someone? Yeah. All the time. We get in foot chases all the time. People want to run. That's why we always have to exercise and make sure that we're ready for it. <laughs> I'm terrible at this game. Ooh, that was that looked good. He's a shark. I don't think it's really anything different from how it was when I started my career. I think a lot of officers they they come with an education knowing that it's effective to have these face-to-face -face contact. There's a little arts and crafts and stuff. What are you making? What's that? Spin art. Spin art? It's nothing really new, but what we have with this this unit specifically, we can focus on those face-to-face -face interactions. Whereas officers that aren't in the unit they can only do it during their free time when they're not dealing with the reported calls. So it just increases our face-to-face -face interactions with the public and creating partnerships with the community so they can work with us to help reduce these crimes. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. You too. Yeah. Thank you. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. It is extremely important in this day and age for our police department to be in our community interacting with our residents and our business owners. As you can see from the footage, we are doing that and we're providing these services to our residents and our business owners, something our staff is very proud of. Deputy Chief Coyle, um, business security, it's a big deal. We have a lot of new businesses popping up. Uh, we actually had a major incident over at the Amazon plant a few weeks ago. You were on staff. Mm -hmm. um, what's going on in the township right now? This is not the sleepy little bedroom community that, that you were raised in. Now, um, you know, I, I get this a lot. I get a lot of uh, phone calls about where we were and where we've come, you know. And no, it isn't. It, a lot has changed in 28 years. Um, and the incidents that you're referring to um, kind of echo what's going on in the United States. Mental health crisis, opioid epidemic. Those are some of the issues that we do have seen, that we have seen here, and we're addressing them. Um, okay. The new businesses, though, we have dealt with um, the security uh, of them. And this is where you access to the the uh, outside okay, it's door? It's on the other end, yes. Okay. Yes. Well, have you had, have uh, you we've already had been out to Andalin and provided site security for them. Sergeant Dowdy has worked uh, uh, extensively okay. with uh, identifying and, uh, their current uh, needs and, and we will continue to work with them, whether that be with active assailant training or, um, like I said, identifying problem areas. Businesses are popping up all over in our industrial areas and also in just in our uh, commercial areas. Yeah. Uh, the township clerk, Stan Grote, asked me the other day, I was explaining to the Board of Trustees how busy the police department has come, and he said, Chief, what is this attesting to? And I really didn't have a, a dignified or professional answer for him, but the answer I gave him is like, you keep stacking brick, 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 brick on top of the building and the homes and everything, and got to the point where like, uh, I don't want to use the word overwhelmed because we're not overwhelmed, but we need more police services, we need more police officers, and this was my push them for our uh, budget for 2019. We're going to be going up to 75 sworn officers. We've grown the department when I first got hired four years ago um, from 60 sworn officers. Now, of note, we have 78,000 residents in the township right now. So our goal is to get up to 80 police officers. That will be roughly one, one police officer per every 1,000 residents, and I think we can hold the hold the uh, fort down for a while. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, as you and I sit down every year and go into budgets and talk about logistics, you know, the, the, the unglamorous side of law enforcement, sitting down and kind of earmarking what's important. And uh, protecting our, our residents is number one. You know, that, that is our number one paramount issue, and we need the bodies to do that. To cover this town and, and provide them with the highest quality of police service requires bodies. Um, to ensure their safety. Um, we're still a very safe community, but that's just not simply from um, harm, that's also from motor vehicle accidents, that's also from theft. Um, providing, like I said, site security for buildings is, is new. We have all of these new businesses that are new to our community that don't have the history, that we're forging relationships with and providing them safety and security. One of the things I'm extremely proud of of our leadership with the budget. Uh, over the last four years, we've come in under budget every single year. This is with growing the department, offering 
in my mind, my eyes, a ton more services than we've ever offered before. So uh, we're doing this very responsibly. Um, under Rick Stathakis and the Board of Trustees leadership, uh, to my knowledge, there's been no tax tax raises whatsoever since he's been in charge. Is that true? As, as far as you and I, yeah, we have not incurred any more taxes to run our agency. Um, as the township grows, so do we. Um, as the needs uh, arise, we address them. And I think that's the big change over the years that I've been here is, is that we are addressing the needs that, um, that the community has identified. Um, they have come to us, we have, a, we have partnered with them, we cooperate and collaborate with them, whether it be through the school districts or businesses, residents, homeowners associations. We have dialogue now that points us in the direction of where we need to be, as opposed to coming to work and uh, kind of um, just uh, existing. We have determined focus, and I've said that since you've got here, is, is that you've legitimized us, you've empowered your people, and you stood out and got out of their way. I appreciate those kind words. It couldn't have done it without our team, our fantastic teamwork that we have. And uh, it's our entire you, staff, really. I mean, yeah. uh, from every person that walks into the building, um, really, it was uh, unleashing their talent, as you've said. You've pointed that out on numerous occasions. We'll go to a staff meeting this afternoon, and again, we'll empower our people and get out of their way. Um, active assailant, this is a hot topic button in the United States of America. You can't pick up a newspaper without some. Uh, whack job, uh, taking a gun and going and shooting places up. Uh, everybody's extremely concerned. I personally weep every time I see this happen. It's, uh, what, what are we going to do about this? What are we doing specifically? Um, and then maybe if you want to segue into, as a society, what can we do about this? Well, the first thing we, we did was is we got people trained. You know, the first evolution of that was active assailant training. So you and I talk about it. We provide um, a tool set to our people. That means we give them the best tools, uh, and then we provide them with a skill set. We teach them how to use those tools. Um, so we have all been trained in single-man entry. We've all been trained in active assailant training. We've all been uh, trained in critical combat care um, so that God forbid any of this were to ever happen in Shelby Township, that we are prepared. Uh, in 2018, we took the next evolution in that, and we partnered again, because these are really uh, partnerships that we build with the fire department and uh, Chief Swinkowski and his personnel. And we now have rescue task force capabilities. That means we have worked uh, in conjunction with them. No longer are they waiting or staging. They're embedded with us so that if we need to provide uh, critical combat care, they can do that. Um, so. What have we done? We, we understand that this is a, a part of society. What's your old adage? Where's the next active assailant going to occur? Take a dart, throw it at the map, and that's where it's going to be. Yes. So we're, we're prepared, um, whether it be with a tool set or a skill set, whether it be a partnership with our, our allies in the fire department, we're ready. Um, and then ultimately, it's reaching out and empowering the community. That's through our school systems and our businesses, telling them what can they do um, to help us, because let's face it, um, they're going to be there first. We're reactionary, we're coming. So we need to empower businesses, our schools, and our, our students to, to deal with these issues. You know, uh, next month I'll be my 32 year anniversary in law enforcement, and I can tell you right now, I feel like I'm 19 years old again. Um, I'm excited, mm -hmm. I come to work with a, with a, with a strut my step every day looking around what we're building here my old employer uh, the chief of police job opened up and I got a million calls are you coming back here you know blah 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 no I'm not coming back here and you you said something on the first two or three weeks you and I were working together that you wanted you personally wanted to be part of something bigger and grander than yourself and that that hit me and I feel for the first time in my life that I'm part of something bigger and grander than myself, what we're building here together. And it's through our teamwork, it's through our commitment to our, our residents. I wrote a letter that I'm very proud of, and I'd like all of our residents to take a look at it. It's right on our Shelby Township Police Department website. Um, it's on page one, and it's my feelings and our thoughts on our police department and about you, our community. So if you get a chance, please take a look at that. Um, out of all the shows, by the way, I've done in the last four years, this has been my favorite. Listen to Deputy Chief Coyle talk about our accomplishments and our commitment to our community. Thank you for watching Straight Talk. We'll see you next month. <laughs>